feel the need for a break from the classic spaghetti and meatballs, I do, and here is a classic pasta dish originating from Napu, Naples in Italy. Whore's Pasta. Oh my goodness, the name of the spaghetti pasta dish derives from the Italian word puttana, which means whore or prostitute. There you go. It's said that the prostitutes created the sauce so that they could entice people in, get their tricks done quickly. Actually, there are all sorts of myths about puttanesca, but the most often quoted story is that it was a cheap dish the working girls of Naples would knock up from the pantry between tricks. Puttanesca pasta is one of the best kept secrets of Italian cuisine and one of my all time favourites and you'll be craving this pasta dish every week after you try it, I promise you. The puntanesca sauce is made with garlic, olives and capers, the heroes of this dish. And I can absolutely understand how this incredible aroma from this dish would entice customers into any establishment. I tell you, the aroma is incredible and the entire recipe is ridiculously easy and amazingly delicious. Okay, let's get on with it. Unsurprisingly, salt pack capers are pretty salty. So I'm gonna grab two tablespoons of the capers that are packed in salt and I'm going to pour some hot water over the top or just warm water and allow them to soak before I strain them and then just give them a rough chop. Peel your garlic cloves, about three good sized garlic cloves, extra if they're small and then we want to just slice them into slithers like this. Finally chop a handful of fresh Italian parsley or oregano if you've got that in the garden Drain off about 150 grams of olives, but hang on to the juice that it's in. Now using a knife, just like this, put it on its side, give it a tap, and now we're gonna discard the pip, and just roughly chop the olive flesh up, and let's just pop them back into that retained juice, because we wanna use that in the sauce. Okay, it's time for a very short ad from the sponsor and yep it's me sponsoring the video i've gone all out and sourced the ingredients for you to cook puttanesca pasta at home the only ingredients that don't come in the kit that you'll need to source yourself is some garlic and parsley that is it everything else gets delivered to your door it's in the kit there's even enough ingredients to make the recipe twice. So it serves four people twice, or you can put it together and it'll serve eight. It's affordable, it's amazing, and there's no need for any late night tricks. <laughs> you can order the kit online at goldsdally.co.nz. The rest of the video is still applicable, even if you wanna go and source your own ingredients, that's quite okay. Hang in with me and I'll show you. But it's a special deal. If you add some extra items to your car and spend over a hundred bucks, I will give you 70% of my all-purpose greater. You just need to use the discount code greater and you will get 70% off your greater. It's a great deal. I would love it if you would hit the like and subscribe button and hit the notification bell. It incentivizes me to do some more videos and I really appreciate it. So if you do, thanks in advance. Okay, let's get a large pot of salted water ready. Ever wondered how much water and salt to get into your pot? Here's the rule of thumb for you. Go for one liter of water for every 100 grams of pasta you are going to cook and three quarters of a tablespoon of salt for every one liter of water that you're using. Now it might seem like a lot of water but you're giving enough room for the pasta to swim uncrowded and then you'll end up with a perfect 
concentration of starchy, salty water at the end, which you're going to use in the sauce. Now I'm using Galt's Deli Herb Salt, which comes in the kit, and I guarantee you if you use this herb salt, you'll never use anything else for your pasta cooking. It's great, but you can use whatever salt you like. Do not put extra virgin olive oil in your pasta water. Otherwise, I'm going to climb down the screen and I'm going to give you a telling off that you'll never forget. You don't need it. Salty boiling water, that's all we need for these long pasta like this. No worries at all. Let's pour in enough extra virgin olive oil to coat the bottom of your large pot. Go for a big pot because we're going to be getting all the pasta in here with the sauce as well. So at least quarter of a cup of extra virgin olive oil. Don't skimp. Now we'll add in the garlic and we'll slowly start bringing the heat up until we get the garlic just sizzling. But you do not want the oil so hot that it begins to smoke. Don't let it get hot, hot. Now let's add in the two anchovy fillets. You stir them around and just start crushing them a little bit with a wooden spoon until the anchovy fillets just dissolve and melt into the sauce with the garlic. And we're gonna cook this until the garlic just begins to start coloring. It normally takes about a minute, maybe a little longer, depending on the heat you've got going on there. If you decide to admit anchovies, you don't know what you're missing out on. They will not make the sauce taste salty. They bring this incredible umami dimension to the sauce. They mustn't be left out, please. Now these guys have had time to hang out a little bit together, let's get this party really cranking and add half a teaspoon of chili flakes. By the way, there's extra chili in the kit in case you're an extra spicy fan. Now, the chopped olives and the capers can go in. The tomatoes need to go in straight away because this instantly stops the garlic and anchovies from overbrowning. Heat the can and you'll see why shortly. Increase the heat to a medium high or until you get a gentle simmer. And let's keep stirring it occasionally until the mixture becomes saucy. This will take about 10 minutes. And whilst your puttanesca pasta sauce is doing its thing, let's cook the pasta. Let's get this water cranking again. And we'll add 250 grams of spaghetti pasta to our boiling salty water. We want to cook our pasta until al dente, according to the package directions. And this one takes eight minutes. So I'm going to finish cooking the pasta in the sauce. And this is the genius. This is the trick. So I'm cooking my pasta until just before al dente. So only like seven minutes, not the eight minutes the packet instructions say. So now, I can drain the pasta off, but it's only been in there seven minutes, and I'm gonna retain the starchy pasta water, and I will finish cooking the spaghetti pasta in the sauce. It's a great technique for a couple of reasons. Firstly, if you want to delay serving your pasta, you turn the heat off and turn it back on just prior to the time you want to serve. The second reason is the sauce flavors will be absorbed by the pasta, as well as coat itself in the sauce much more effectively. And to finish cooking the pasta, add a couple of small ladles of the starchy pasta water into the tomato tin. Give it a good rinse around and then pour it into your sauce. And now finish cooking off the pasta in the sauce. The olive oil and the acid from the tomatoes in the sauce will emulsify, giving you a much better sauce for coating your pasta. You'll end up with a thicker, creamier, more evenly layered sauce that will cling to the pasta. So I cook my pasta for about seven minutes. I've drained my pasta off 
and I've added it in to the sauce, and now I'm gonna bring it back to a simmer. And the pasta is gonna finish cooking, but it will be way slower cooking in the sauce than in the boiling salted water. And this is gonna give me control over hitting that perfect al dente mark, right? I know from experience, just another two minutes of cooking time and it will be perfectly al dente. But pull a piece out and try it if you're unsure. You just want it to be al dente. Finally, let's get this chopped parsley in here and let's get a plate and serve some up. Now, some people actually grate a little parmesan over the top, or some people even use pecorino. But I actually think the sauce has enough savory oomph, making the cheese unnecessary. And the Italians will tell you that if you're adding anchovies or seafood to a pasta dish, you do not use Parmigiano Reggiano. You could up the ante with this whole dish by adding a little bit of white wine to the sauce, a splash or two, maybe a quarter of a cup, would richen the sauce up and be pretty jolly good. Some people even at the end when they're serving the pasta, squeeze a little lemon juice over the top, but I actually believe that the tomatoes have enough acidity to cut through the richness, so there's no real need. But hey, feel free to squeeze over a touch of lemon juice or grate some well-aged Parmigiano Reggiano over the top, whatever takes your fancy. Oh, I reckon, look at that. Buon appetito. And the trick is you don't need a spoon. Just put your fork in there and wind it up. Oh, it smells incredible. It's just got the right amount of spiciness for me. You could cut back on the chili flakes if you like, or you could up them. There's plenty in the kit. And it will depend if you're sourcing your own ingredients, how hot your chili flakes are, but this is just perfect. Um, so easy, amazingly delicious. Buon appetito. If you like the recipe, it's in the link below. And if you'd like us to send you a Putanesca kit, we'll send you that as well. No problems at all, of course. And the link below is there for you. Hey, everybody. Bon appetito.